Bombs and grenades are pretty easy to understand, but in video games they work a little differently than in real life. And so in this Godot tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add a grenade to your video game. So let's open up Godot and open up a new empty scene. The first thing we're going to do is click on this plus icon at the top left of the screen, and in the window that pops up, we're going to type rigid body in the search bar. Click on rigid body and click create. This creates a rigid body node, and I'm going to rename it to grenade tut. I'm going to right click on grenade tut and click add child, type collision shape in the search bar, and add collision shape as a child of grenade tut. In the inspector, click on empty next to the shape property and select new sphere shape. Click on sphere shape in the inspector and set its radius to 0.1. This is how big our grenade is going to be. Next, right click on grenade tut, add child, and add a mesh instance node as a child. In the inspector, click on empty next to the mesh property and select new sphere mesh, which creates a ball. Click on the little preview window in the inspector and set its radius to 0.1 just like the collision shape, and set its height to 0.2. Next, right click on Grenade Tut and Add Child and add an Area node. I'm going to rename it to Blast Radius. Then, right click on Blast Radius, Add Child and add a Collision Shape node as a child of it. Click on Empty next to the Shape property in the Inspector, select New Sphere Shape, click on Sphere Shape in the Inspector and set its radius to whatever you want the grenade's effective range to be. In my case, I set it to 5, and so anything within this sphere can potentially take damage from the grenade explosion. Finally, I'm going to right click on Grenade Tut one last time, select Add Child, and add a timer node as a child of Grenade Tut. In the inspector, change the wait timer property to however long you want your grenade's fuse to be, I chose 3 seconds, and then tick the box to enable one shot. That's it for the setup, so now we can start coding by clicking on Grenade Tut and clicking on the Add Script button. Name it whatever you want. The first thing we need to do is create a reference to a few of the components of the grenade. We'll create a reference to the blast radius area node by typing on ready var blast underscore radius equals dollar sign blast radius. And we'll also create a reference to the timer node by typing on ready var timer equals dollar sign timer. Next, we're going to write var triggered equals false, and this keeps track of if our grenade has been triggered to explode or not. By default, it's not triggered. And finally, we're going to define how much damage the grenade does when it explodes by writing var damage equals 150, or whatever damage amount you prefer. Moving on, we need to create a test enemy to make sure our grenade is working. Here, I have an enemy character already made. If you've watched my other videos, then you already know how to create something basic like this, so I won't get into it here. But there are a few things you should know. If you look in this script for the enemy, you'll see that its health is 100, and if its health drops to 0 or goes below 0, It'll die and be deleted from the game. In the inspector, if you click on the node tab and click on groups, you'll see that the enemy is in a group called enemy. If you don't have this, just type enemy with a capital E in the text box and click add. Moving back to our grenade scene, click on grenade tut and in the inspector, click on the node tab and click on signals. Right click on body entered, select connect and in the window, click on grenade tut and click connect. This will add a new function to the grenade script that will trigger the moment something collides with the grenade. In real life, grenades start counting down as soon as you pull the pin and toss it, but in a lot of video games, grenades don't start counting down until it hits a wall or the ground to prevent them from exploding in midair. For this demo, we'll be doing this as well. So in this function, delete pass and write if not triggered, timer.start. So if the grenade hits a wall or the floor, and if it hasn't already been triggered, then its timer will start counting down. We'll also set triggered to true so that it only starts the countdown timer once and doesn't restart if it bounces multiple times. Next, click on timer and in the node tab under signals, right click on the timeout signal and click connect. Like before, click on grenade tut and click connect. This creates a new function in the script that will trigger when the grenade's timer counts down to zero. In this function, delete pass and write var bodies equals blast radius dot get overlapping bodies. What this will do is create a list of every object that enters into the blast radius of the grenade. This list is then given the name bodies. Then we're going to write for b in bodies if b dot is in group enemy b dot health minus equals damage. Here, the letter b just represents every individual item in this list called bodies. So if there are 5 enemies in the bodies list, B just represents each individual enemy on that list. 
and you don't have to call it B. You can call it enemy or flesh bag or uwu or whatever you want, it doesn't matter. And so for every item called B in the body's list, it will check if that object is in the enemy group. And if it is, it will decrease its health by our damage amount. But before we test this out, make sure to click on the grenade tut node and in the inspector, set its contacts reported property to one and turn on contact monitoring, otherwise the grenade won't trigger. I've gone ahead and set up this scene where the grenade will drop from the sky and trigger when it touches the ground. Unfortunately, I won't be getting into how to throw the grenade in this video because it highly depends on how you built your character, but I might revisit this sometime in the future. Anyways, when we run the game, the grenade falls from the sky, hits the ground, and after 3 seconds, it explodes and kills all the enemies near it. One problem you'll notice is that it even kills the enemy that is hiding behind these orange boxes. That's not very realistic, so let's fix that. So back in the script, we're going to delete b.health minus equals damage, and instead, when the grenade explodes, it's going to shoot invisible ray cast lines to every enemy object in the blast radius. And only if that ray cast has a clear line of sight to the enemy without any obstacles in the way, will it apply damage to the enemy. I've already explained ray casting in my video on ray casting, and so I'm just gonna plow right through this. Var space equals get world dot direct space state, var collision equals space dot intersect ray, global transform dot origin, comma, b dot global transform dot origin, if collision dot collider dot is in group enemy, b dot health minus equals damage. We'll also write q free to delete the grenade after it explodes. Now, when you run the game, the grenade acts almost exactly the same as before, but it no longer kills enemies that are behind cover. And that's about it. I also won't be getting into how to create the visuals for the explosion, because this video is more about the mechanics, not the artistic aspect, but maybe I'll revisit that as well in the future. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you're curious about my computer setup, you can check out the links below. Follow me on Twitter for updates, join the Discord, like, subscribe, bell icon, and as always, have a nice day.